We know that dairy has been an important source of nutrition for people for a long time. That's the first food we have as an infant. As we grow older, many of us don't tolerate dairy so well. I have had issues drinking regular milk pretty much all through high school and into college. I get bloated, a lot of abdominal cramps, and I usually just try to stay away from it. About 70% of the people globally are lactose intolerant. They tend to therefore avoid dairy. So when they drink milk, they have an unpleasant response. It might be they feel a bit nauseous or some bloating. And obviously the best way to avoid that is to avoid drinking milk. But by doing that, they're avoiding some of the important nutritional components of milk. We know that a lot of people report having trouble consuming dairy, and so we wanted to investigate what it is about dairy that causes them problems. So we had people come in that already said that they have trouble, and we looked to see whether they were lactose intolerant first, and then we gave them a couple different types of milk to see if we could identify what it was about the milk that was causing them trouble. We want to understand this lactose intolerance a bit better. We think that some of these people who believe they're lactose intolerant may in fact be intolerant to a protein component of the milk. And if we can understand it better, we might be able to enable them to enjoy milk, which they are currently avoiding. What we wanted to test was first look at how these people responded to regular milk. And we compared that with lactose-free milk, since we know lactose might be something that causes trouble. We also compared it to A2 milk. So A2 milk has a different type of protein than conventional milk. About 10,000 years ago, all cows produced A2 milk. So A2 refers to the beta casein protein. But sometime after that, a mutation occurred, and that resulted in a different version of this protein, which is called the A1 version. And what we understand is that most people can tolerate the A2 version well. We think that some people don't tolerate the A1 version as well. And what we did was we had them drink this large amount of milk, so 750 milliliters, about three glasses, and then we looked at their body's response. Really importantly, we had them report how they were feeling after drinking these different types of milk. So we wanted them to report how much stomach pain they had, how much bloating they were feeling, or if they were feeling nauseous, to see if they had different responses to each of the types of milks. What we think is that some people respond differently to the A1 version and what they perceive to be lactose intolerance may in fact be a reaction to the A1 version. This might result in some intestinal inflammation and lead to symptoms which they think are due to lactose intolerance but may in fact be due to that A1 version of the beta casein. The lactose intolerant women actually reported more similar symptoms with A2 milk as with lactose free milk compared to conventional milk. So with conventional milk they experienced more nausea um, and abdominal pain throughout the course of 12 hours but with A2 milk they actually had fewer of these symptoms quite similar to with lactose free milk. This indicates that there is something different going on. Aside from just removing the lactose, we may be able to alleviate some of these symptoms by changing the type of protein in the milk. What this means for someone with lactose intolerance is that there's another option aside from removing the lactose in milk for them to choose. So with A2 milk, we know that on a single occasion, that's going to alleviate some of the symptoms that they may be experiencing. And what we want to look at in the next study is to see whether there might actually be longer term effects of reducing something like inflammation with A2 milk, which you wouldn't get with lactose-free milk.